If you've ever had a water leak in your home, you know the frustration of water damage and the pain in the butt it is to get things back to normal. What if I told you with these early detection water systems, you can save yourself a lot of headache? Stay tuned and I'll teach you about how I use water sensors. Hi everybody, welcome to Mechanically Inclined YouTube edition. Uh, I've been getting a lot of feedback on people asking where to get these water sensors at and I wanted to do a video and just tell you a little bit more about uh, how effective these water sensors can be at early detection of leaks. So after working in condo buildings and homes for about 15 years now, uh, you learn that water damage is the biggest problem in these homes, uh, especially in condominiums where you have multiple levels that if something leaks, you really want to do your best to catch it as quickly as possible. So in the video on TikTok, that's about 400,000 views right now. We had a leak coming from a neighboring unit, a drain lines got cracked and started dripping water. So as the water was coming down, it ran into one of these bad boys. And on the bottom of these leak sensors, uh, there are two contacts. When the contacts get wet, it will uh, send an alarm out. And each one of these leak sensors has, has a battery inside of it, a little nine volt battery that when the battery goes dead, it will also start squealing. So you'll get a false alarm in about two years when these batteries die, but it's well worth the, the false alarm to have something like this in place. I'm gonna leave a link to, in the description to find uh, something that's very similar to this. It's even a little bit better. These ones were, we got them really cheap in bulk, but the AquaGuard that I'm gonna leave a link on Amazon to uh, is definitely going to do uh, the same job. And I see it in a lot of residential homes across uh, Maryland here. So I wanted to go over also the common locations where you should be putting these detectors. So <clears throat> number one is underneath your kitchen sink. Uh, the reason why I highly recommend under kitchen sinks is because half the time that something starts leaking there, nobody's going to notice until the whole bottom panel is rotted out or you have water coming through the floor below or your vinyl flooring starts buckling uh, from the humidity. Uh, part of the reason why is a lot of people that have um, basic faucets installed, when they start leaking, the water will run down the faucet and go underneath and it will be undetected. You also have drains and garbage disposals that can develop leaks over time. You have stop valves under there. So what I tend to do is I'll put this leak sensor in the middle of the sink. You can, you can put multiple leak sensors in and some of the ones, I think the AquaGuard also has an adapter that you can have uh, an additional sensor that you can run over either under the dishwasher or, or put just multiple uh, detection points under your sink. Because if these things don't get wet, they're not going to go off. So we'll move over to HVAC. So you're either going to have, in most homes, you'll have an air conditioner unit in the attic that'll be laying sideways, or you'll have a furnace and AC in the basement. So what you want to do is just put it anywhere down there close. If, you're, if your uh, furnace also has a drain pan under it, that's a bonus. You can set it inside the drain pan. Um, I also like to put one outside of the drain pan as well. If you can afford it, it doesn't hurt because sometimes things will be dripping in that area that won't be caught by the drain pan. Same goes in the attic. Attics are a huge source of water damage. If you've seen my video where the water's coming out, raining out of the ceiling, a leak detector like this could have saved it, this ceiling, you know, they could have saved thousands of dollars, uh, although they're probably going to get an insurance claim. Nobody wants to deal with that stuff. So attics are huge. You do not want water in your attic. So next place that we have very common leaks is going to be in toilets. So on toilets, um, you want to put them by the supply line. That's going to be 90% of the time where the leak is going to happen. 10% of the time, you're going to have some leaks. If it's a two-piece tank, you'll have some leaks between the gaskets on the... Uh, on the toilet, uh, there's going to be some bolts that go to secure this thing. But water will start rip it, dripping down and eventually it will get caught by one of these leak sensors. So uh, another common leak that people get that starts developing and that you can catch it, if you can catch it quickly, you can save yourself a big flood, is water heaters. Water heaters need to be replaced at least every 12 to 15 years. That's their life expectancy. Water heaters are huge huge tanks of water that will, will flood your place and cause lots and lots of damage. So I recommend if you have a drain pan under your water heater, you can set one in the drain pan. If you don't, you can just set it, you can just set it down next to it. Um, so then we can talk about Wi-Fi sensors. 
Wi-Fi sensors are great if you are somebody that travels a lot. Um, there is a, uh, I'll try to leave a link to the description to the, um, the Honeywell one that we use. I think they're about 75 bucks or so. Uh, you can integrate up to, I think, 100 or something of these devices on one account. There's some other ones on Amazon I haven't tested yet. I'll be testing some different ones over the next uh, year or so and seeing really what is a good alternative to a $75 leak, de $75 leak detector. It can be quite expensive. They have some cheaper ones, but when you get into you know, inexpensive off-brand um, products that are using Wi-Fi, there is a potential that it's going to fail when you need it. So <clears throat> for everybody, you should at least get battery operated ones. These things are 10 bucks each or less, depending on where you find them. Uh, again, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, if you guys haven't seen my TikTok channel, uh, we're about a quarter million followers on TikTok now. I really appreciate all the support. Uh, do me a favor, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. I'm trying to get this YouTube channel off the ground. If you like tutorials like these, I'm going to be doing some longer form content on uh, electrical repairs, HVAC repairs, plumbing repairs, so that you too can become mechanically inclined. Thanks for watching.